How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Friday here on this program, and you know what that means? A lot to talk about, as always, including tomorrow. It is the Crown Jewel Show, and everybody's there. Show must go on. We've got... Uh, Got a lot of matches. Nine matches announced for the show. And they have added that uh, Jake Paul is going to be there in the corner of Logan Paul. So I'm sure he is making a lot of money to do that. So we got Crown Jewel to talk about. We'll plug that today. SmackDown is tonight. Rampage, the most wacky Rampage of all time, is coming up tonight as well. We have a lineup for that show. As well as a lot of notes from the latest Observer, including a lot of notes on Colt Cabana. Matt Hardy had a lot to say. There's a lot in the Observer about it. We'll tell you about that here today. The Dynamite ratings for Wednesday, which all things considered, it did a good number. When you consider the competition, uh, they ended up number three on cable. So we'll tell you how they did. We have got a... Lineup for WrestleMania weekend. Man, there's a lot of stuff. We got SmackDown, NXT Stand and Deliver, WrestleMania 31 Night 1, WrestleMania 39 Night 2, and Raw. Five straight days. Actually, four straight days, because two of these are going to be on the uh, on the same day. Stand and Deliver and WrestleMania 39 Night 1 are going to be on the same day. That's going to be seven hours of WWE programming, followed by another four hours of WrestleMania the next day, and then three hours of Raw, two hours of SmackDown. So we'll give you the the lineup there and so much more. If you want to text us here today, you should know the number, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Joe Galley of the NWA will join us in the final segment of the show. A lot to get into today, Observer Live. Yay! That's Hanalei freaking out in front of my door. She has impeccable timing. Well, we're going to try and make it through 10 minutes here for this first segment. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live here on the air. I'm putting money on it. It ain't happening. You're hitting that door. We got uh, Hanalei joining us for the first segment of the show. Bring her in. Joe Galley will be joining us for the... Uh, I hear she's been dragged away. All right. <laughs> God. How long before she's able to slither away and be back up by the door? I mean, depends on if Grandpa grabs her or not. I don't know what's going on down there. Supposed to be... Man, you even have reinforcements? Where's Whitney? Is she not there? Uh, she's working and I'm working, so we have a, a grandparent here, but she fled. That's what happened. Apparently. Got them all sugared up and just sent them wild. Let's see how we can get going today. Tonight is Rampage. We have uh, an eclectic lineup tonight. Rampage live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. I know it. AW All-Atlantic Championship is on the line. Orange Cassidy versus Katsuyori Shibata with Iron Mike Tyson doing commentary. Oh, my. Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus Madison Rain and Sky Blue. With Mike Tyson on commentary, for those of you wondering where he's been, Ricky Starks will be doing a promo with Mike Tyson on commentary, <laughs> and that's the lineup for the show. You seem to, to have a real interest in Mike Tyson being on commentary. Too. Well, you know, Dave mentioned on Observer Radio the other day, and he's right. He goes, you know, no matter what, we're going to have something to talk about with Mike Tyson on commentary. Yeah, a lot of FCC violations, possibly. This is not a tape show, everybody. It's live. Live. We're we're live, pal. So that's tonight. (laughs) And uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, my. That is a choice to make. I don't know how Mike Tyson is. I've seen him do a lot of interviews recently. Every time I've seen Mike Tyson, he has got a handful of Mike Tyson-branded cannabis that he is smoking on. And sometimes... He can't really stay on task. So this ought to be interesting. The last time he was at AEW, I believe they went to a shot of him falling asleep in a chair. So, You know, a couple of people here asking uh, in the chat if uh, 
if Mike Tyson will be on commentary? The answer is yes. Mike Tyson will be on commentary tonight. Now, are you sure Rampage. that this is for the whole night and not just Well, I don't know what like, they're going to do. They okay. may put him on for the first match and get rid of him. Who knows? Get the hook. I, but I, here's... You know, no offense to Mike Tyson, because, you know, or AEW or anybody, but I don't know, as a wrestling fan, if I want Shibata in Orange Cassidy necessarily commentated by Mike Tyson. Well, you're going to get it, bro. I don't care what you want. I know. That's I know. what they're doing. Yeah. You know, if this works, you can do voiceover for other classic matches of the past, maybe a DVD release or something on streaming when they get that service up and going. Cole Cabana's appearance on Dynamite is being considered a, quote, morale booster for the AEW locker room. It was his first match on Dynamite since losing to Brian Danielson on the November 24, 2021 episode, although he did continue to appear on Dark and Elevation until March. The decision for Cabana to be Jericho's mystery opponent was addressed by our own Dave Meltzer, Friday's edition of the Observer Newsletter. Quote, Cabana appearing led to even more talk because people saw it as a shot at punk or a vindication of the story that Cabana stopped being used in AEW due to punk. Whatever it was, it was Tony Khan's idea, Meltzer said. We were told this was more for the locker room than anything else. That having Cabana on the show and given a positive spotlight after months of being ostracized for reasons that had nothing to do with him was a dressing room morale booster since he had many friends there. Cabana was originally hired as an agent, had been producing matches for Dark and Elevation, while also performing on screen as a member of the Dark Order. He left for Australia to perform as the Brooklyn Brawler in the Young Rock series, and when he returned, AEW stopped using him. It was around this same time the company hired Ace Steel. Cabana's contract was set to expire this summer, but he was given a new deal to work Ring of Honor for the same money that he had been earning before. So yes, since people are asking, these are separate contracts. They, there, are, there are AEW contracts, and there are Ring of Honor contracts. So, you know, it's not like you sign a contract with Tony Khan Enterprises, and then he puts you, you know, wherever he wants. TKE? There's a, there is a Ring of Honor company and an AEW company, and you're either signed to AEW or you're signed to Ring of Honor. So he was signed to Ring of Honor, and uh, that's what happened. As best we can tell, it says, Cabana was only in for that one match, but is still under contract to Ring of Honor, but is no longer ostracized and could be used again in some form, <laughs> Meltzer said. Jesus, God ostracized yeah i'm tired of ricky starks being ostracized to dark and elevation and anywhere else he is the, tonight better be the night that he remains on main shows from this point out that's what i'm saying matt hardy said the record straight on comments from his most recent podcast where it was misconstrued that he witnessed the backstage fight between punk and the elite at all out after an earlier story from our website and others took his comments to mean he was present for the fight he said on the Extreme Life with Matt Hardy podcast that the comments, he said, were taken the wrong way. I will say this right here and now, he said. Those guys didn't do anything wrong in this situation. If anything, they were the victims. And I'm telling you that from a first-person perspective. I was there. I witnessed it all. <laughs> in the aforementioned tweet, Hardy said those comments were in regard to the, quote, entire process in real time over the months, yeah. but that he stood by his opinion that Omega and the Bucks were not in the wrong. Can't leave that part out when telling that story. He said, I love all three of these guys. I've known Matt and Nick forever. I've just gotten to know Kenny while I've worked with AEW, but I'm very happy they're returning to TV, and they are back, and they are in the mix. They deserve to be in the mix. He was asked about Cole Cabana appearing on Dynamite this week. I was excited for it. It was great. Cole Cabana, he had just been away from AEW for a very long time. It is what it is. I don't really have to sit here and go into things, but we are in a position right now where he can go back on AEW TV and I am glad to have him back. I'm glad their names have been cleared. They are coming back to TV. I'm very happy to see Colt Cabana, who I think is a great human being and also think is a great performer. I am very happy to see him back on AEW programming. And a lot of AEW stars tweeted about Colt last couple of days. I didn't see all of them because I avoid Twitter, except for my loyal super followers, who I, I mean, we're the last ones standing here. Let me tell you, me and the super followers. Did you see? 
Elon dust over here. All the unbelievably stupid stuff. It was on my timeline after uh, the dynamite ratings came in. No, I have you muted. Are people actually... This is, this is a question I have. It's a serious question. Even though it sounds like a joke. Yes. Are people actually that dumb? Yes. Okay. That's all I need to know. Yes. yes. Logan Paul will have backup as he takes on Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. It was officially confirmed. You know, I was accused of being an... Uh, what was the term today? May not have even been me, but I took it personally. An a- MBS apologist? AEW apologist, yeah. <laughs> oh, AEW, sorry. Yeah, so I was accused of... But, but they wouldn't actually say anybody's name. because are an they were, apologist, They I were thought. too big a coward. <laughs> coward! Yeah. Show yourself. I'm not a fan of cowards, personally. Your fake avatars and whatnot. That's what Elon needs to be getting it rid of. actually wasn't on Twitter. It was elsewhere. Ugh. Yeah. Even worse. Oh, it's bad. It's bad out there. Terrible. Terrible out there. But anyway, this other guy, Jake Paul... Who? Is he related to Logan? I don't know. He does bad numbers, I heard. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Terrible numbers. He was talking up all this money that he made against Anderson Silva. And then I'm sure when the auditing comes out, that's not going to be true. When's the last time that a Jake Paul fight has made money for Showtime or Triller or anybody else for that matter? Hey, you know what uh, is special about uh, Jake Paul showing up at the WWE show tomorrow? What's that? He's got a total NXT name. Jake Paul. <laughs> he does. He does. He does. Jake I mean, Paul. Jake Paul. Even Logan Paul. That sounds like an actual person's name. But Jake Paul. That sounds like someone got hired. You know, uh, Fred uh, Hinkleberry got hired for NXT. And they're like, pick a new name. Jake Paul. Back in a moment to talk about Jake Paul. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Two things that we'll talk about this crown jewel. First off, in my greatest plug of all time, I am here to tell you that if you go to video.f4wonline.com, you may be able to get 50% off your first month. You may be able to get 20% off your first month. Or you may just get nothing. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you how it works. I'm flabbergasted. Video.f4wonline.com. It's our video service. Brian and Vinny Show. Wrestling Observer Radio. Wrestling Observer Live. Brian and Vinny Show. Figure 4 Daily. Filthy 4 Daily. All on video. Full HD. But uh, I was told, hey, you know, if you, you know, tell everyone to sign up now because they get 50% off the first month. So uh, I told everybody that. And then, you know, I hear it's actually only 20%. So I was like, okay. So then I told everyone it was 20%. And then I had people saying, I can't get any discount. <laughs> I'm like, is someone messing with me here at YouTube? <laughs> so then, you know, I, I was asking around, like, you guys can't get any, what? And then people started sending me screenshots. This person's screenshot, he got 50% off. This person's screenshot, he got 25% what you, off. Are you, what are you selling, hotel rooms here? <laughs> I'm like, dude, can somebody help me out? <laughs> what kind of service is this YouTube? So anyway... And then I got another guy here. He got 20%. I don't know, bro. Go to video.f4wonline.com and uh, and try signing up. And it's like you roll the dice and what you get. So anyway, we were doing a Brian and Vinny show last night. And Vinny's, Vinny's biggest fan and my biggest rival, John in Memphis. Yes. He's always there trolling and complaining and everything like that. And last night we noticed he wasn't there for the second straight show. So given that he's got a he's got a a, a pretty no joke job. He deals with violent offenders. Everybody was a little bit worried. So I can tell everybody that was watching last night that he's I He's not in the AW locker room. I I have been out. in contact with John and he's fine. Apparently he has a lot of work he has to do uh, uh between, you know, after Halloween and into the first week of no. So he's now, fine we, everybody. Were so. you really concerned over his condition or were you concerned over the fact that man if this keeps continuing on maybe his uh bro i was concerned enough to, to go through all my text messages find his number and text him so yes i was concerned wait because i vinny know what his job that? is vinny didn't do that for him all right Why didn't so he do that for him that's his biggest fan i'm tomorrow. surprised you had to take the the lead in that john is vinny's biggest fan nobody said it was reciprocal Ah. Now, 
Crown Jewel is Saturday, and we have got Roman Reigns versus Logan Paul with Jake Paul in his corner. And presumably the whole uh, bloodline is going to be there. My guess is Roman wins. Uh, I don't know about the entire bloodline. Well, not Sammy. He's he's only an honorary ooze. Yeah. The actual ooze will be there. And then I presume Logan Paul uh, loses, and him and Jake Paul knock some blokes out, and that's that. Do they play the videos inside the arena there or inside the stadium, the same ones that we see on the screen? Are they going to cut Sami Zayn out of all of those to make sure that Probably. the kingdom stays happy? Probably. Hmm. But maybe, they, maybe, they won't play, maybe they'll play one video for the arena and the other video for us at home. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Which, by the way, the last time they wrestled, Bobby Lashley got injured because Brock gave him a bunch of Germans and Lashley lands on his shoulder every time. I don't know. who I, I don't want to blame Bobby Lashley, but, like, nobody else lands on their shoulder when Brock does these, and Lashley yeah. does every single time, and he hurt himself last time. And they did an angle a couple of weeks ago, and he took a German, landed the exact same way. So... I'm praying that Bobby Lashley ends up okay coming out of this You know who else would take him like that? That he reminds me of sometimes is Rick Steiner. When Rick Steiner would get thrown around by, you know, Ron Simmons or a Butcher Eat or somebody like that, almost dead on the same way. And probably for Lashley, he's been taking him that same way with those massive shoulders for a long time and didn't get hurt. But, I mean, Bobby Lashley, we talked about his age before, deceptively older than than what he looks. Apparently, uh, Saudi fans chanted, we want Sammy. Must have been during that press conference. Good. Well, you ain't going to get him. That's too bad. But, uh, I think more people should step up and stand behind him in that thing, but, you know, that's me. Bianca Belair versus – well, I mean, they stand behind him. He doesn't want to go, so he doesn't go. No, he can't go. Well, I don't He's think he serious. wants to go. I think it's I, I think it's both sides here. Well, I wouldn't want to go there either, but, you know, the fact that they suggested he not go, in fact, they flat out said we don't want him here being a Syrian. and be, So, uh, you know, that whole situation is nasty – there's a lot about the situation that's nasty. We got Bianca and Bailey, last woman standing, which actually might be a title change, given that they switched the tag titles on Monday night. We got Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross, Braun Strowman versus Omos. Hmm. We have got the Usos against the Brawling Brutes for the tag titles. Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Damage Control. This Usos thing is interesting because they're facing all these baby faces. But I don't think anybody wants the baby faces to actually win because I want the Usos to drop the titles, I think, to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. At least I do. Alexa and Asuka in a rematch against Damage Control for the tag titles. So I guess they could actually just put the titles back on. Back and flip back, yeah. Dakota and EO. OC... Versus Judgment Day, and Bray Bray Wyatt will appear, but we don't know anything about Uncle Howdy. Jesus, can Uncle Howdy get clear? Can Uncle Howdy get through TSA looking like that? We're going to find out. Well, my guess is he wouldn't wear that mask going through TSA, but I. Oh, that's not his real face. It's clearly a mask, Mike. Oh, I couldn't help but notice on Monday. Sweet Hansen did look like that. Actually, it was uh, it was over the weekend. Some, somebody sent me a, a message. They're like, did you look at Uncle Howdy? I was like, well, I saw him. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> Apparently, they'd freeze-framed it. <laughs> are you and, looking uh, at it, Brian, or are you seeing it? One of Uncle Howdy's eyes had the uh, uh, same thing that Mal, uh, Alistair Black has in his eyes. A contact? Yeah. So they were like, maybe it's Alistair. Ah, well, oh, Jesus. It's not Alistair. <laughs> no, he was there getting a branch put on his forehead by Julia Hart before he was thrown in the water, where apparently Buddy Matthews was. That's what they're saying, Brian. It's your fault. Uh, this person here says, many people think, think that that's how... You guys actually think that's Howdy's actual face? You don't see that he's wearing a mask? What? Look, the only human being, like I said, that I know that look like that, if you go through, watch YouTube of the WWF in the 80s or Jim Crockett promotions, you'll see a guy by the name of Swede Hansen, who actually used to do some battling there with Bray Wyatt's grandfather, Black Jack Mulligan. And that's kind of what Swede Hansen's face looked like until it turned green. Then it looked like the, you know, the great Muda spit a bunch of mist in his face. But there was. <laughs> Hold on a second. Go ahead. I got to ask this question. I hope it comes back. I hope and it's actually, Barry Windham himself. There's no answer, but... Or so, Mike Rotundo. 
Are you guys telling me that I'm supposed to believe that that's not Bray Wyatt and that's a different guy with that and that's his actual face? Is that what you're telling me I'm supposed to believe? Well, you can believe it's a different guy. I don't know about a different face. That's what I'm supposed to believe? Okay, listen. It's clearly at this Bo, point. Bo Dallas got a lot of surgery while he was off. It's clearly at this point Bray in a mask. Okay? Now, when when the actual Uncle Howdy comes out and takes his mask off, I don't expect it to be Bray since he's also going to be in the ring, I presume. But you're telling me that right now, right now when I watch Uncle Howdy, I'm supposed to believe that that's the guy's actual face and it's not Bray? Are you telling me that? <laughs> well, if you believe that, then that goes directly against all those crazy people out there who believe that Bray Wyatt's feud will be with himself and everything will take place in the cinematic universe of Bray Wyatt and WWE. I think, okay, I think that we're supposed to think that Bray is playing one character and he's simultaneously playing Uncle Howdy. Now, now, in real life, why a guy would do that, I don't know. But I think it's fans were supposed to believe that he's both guys, okay? But then, at some point, Uncle Howdy and Bray are going to be in the same place at the same time. And then Howdy takes his mask off and is Bo Dallas. That's what I presume is going to happen here. I would like this idea a lot more with Elias and uh, Ezekiel in the WWE Cinematic Universe. I think that would probably have been much better. I just want them to also retrofit a story in because they are going through all of this work and we know who his family is and we are getting glimpses of I'm just Bray Wyatt, the person, you know, when he's doing his promos that some of this came from the fact that from a very young age, his father wanted him to get into accounting so he could be the next IRS. And he's been going through some severe hell from that time ever since. And this person can't believe his name is Uncle Howdy. Yeah, that's his name. Uncle Howdy. Look at the names in that funhouse that he had. Why Why is Uncle Howdy that big of a shot? Why is Uncle Howdy worse than Huskus, Huskus, that fat pig? Now, let me get through this quickly. Dynamite, 911,000 viewers. Down 8.6%. Considering they were going up against Game 4 of the World Series on Fox, which did 12 million viewers, this is actually... Like, honestly, I thought this was going to be a show that did in the low 800s or mid 800s. So 911,000 is actually a very good number. It was third on cable. And uh, I think it only, I think it was just behind sports programming as always. So uh, if you're on Twitter and you see people saying, but it didn't get a million. There's a, there are two buttons. There's mute and block. Or you can just ignore them, which is the easiest solution, but. There is actually a, a mute is definitely thing you the can, better solution you can push and easiest. Anyway, back in a moment. Joe Galley, Observer Live. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sumbervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today to be joined by Joe Galley of the NWA. We got Hard Times 3 coming up in New Orleans on November 12th. Uh, Chalmette, Louisiana is actually where it's at. We've got a lot of matches announced for the show. And how you doing there, Joe Galley? Living the dream, man. It's it's crazy that we're just a week away from this big pay-per-view. The first time the Lightning One era has gone to the Big Easy. I'm very excited. We've got just a, a huge amount of matches, and we are just going to be rocking that New Orleans area, Chalmette, Louisiana. You know, we're going into a place. You know, we've we've partnered with Wildcat uh, Sports, which is owned by Luke and PJ Hawks, and uh, we know they're bringing a huge fan base. So I'd just love to see you know excited wrestling fans come in and just seeing what uh, wrestling as it's meant to be you know the uh we got a live chat here on uh twitch as well as youtube i try to avoid the youtube one you know the free youtube but uh twitch here the, this person the first thing they noted was that's an emmy behind you joe galley oh this huh? guy yeah oh this old thing <laughs> i don't know if people know this or not they should but you were a shoot journalist huh well, you know, I think that that's an interesting way to put it. I feel like all people who do journalism, just because you have a specific niche, doesn't mean that you're a shoot journalist or a, you know, everyone who works, you know, with, with whether it's The Observer or any of these other things that are out there, you're all doing the best that you can to, to cover and get 
good and interesting stories and get facts for people. So I wouldn't want to begrudge anyone just because it's traditional and you can, you know, work hard enough to be awarded things like an Emmy or an Edward R. Murrow award. It, it, that shouldn't diminish the work that you Wait, got. you got an Edward R. Murrow award? Are you telling me that you have that well, as well? I'm, let's, I, this, it doesn't need to be all about my accomplishments and my previous yeah, does. career Hold as on a second. You got journalist. an Edward R. Murrow it's award? Like, Is that true? It's like, you know, That's I, I pretty don't heavy. want to talk around, you know, it's not, I, I think I would like to talk more about if I was, you know, a world heavyweight champion and you get to have those title belts, like that's the world that I live in. Oh, well, yeah, wait we'll a get second. to that. Who we'll cares about that. all these other little tiny things that happened, you know, back when I was, you know, covering homicides and immigration and politics and corruption and all that stuff that people see at five o'clock uh, um, Monday through Friday. I'd much rather talk about the stuff that you're going to see later in hey. the night. When we're having some wrestling. Well, I'll get to that. But listen, I'll <laughs> trade you a Texarkana television title for an Edward R. Murrow Award. What do you think? Oh, I, I, I think that's a fair trade. Oh, really? Hmm, yeah, hey, look, we yeah, all we grew up as that. fans of wrestling, but we're fans of radio and journalism as well, too, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to lie either. I am a work journalist. I mean, you know, you actually went to school for it and did all that kind of stuff. Come on. But you know, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I what? <laughs> what else people might not know is besides your Emmy... And this secret Edward R. Murrow award that you won't confirm nor deny. <laughs> you... I might as well just deny it because I don't have it. I guess you could just Google it. Oh, well, <laughs> well I did Google it. I saw the other stuff, but not that one. This one's real. Golly. <laughs> but, but really, I don't know. Can you really Google that stuff? I mean, if you take somebody, I mean, they kind of hand those things out so much. I feel like. Don't tell me that because I don't have one. You could fake that. You could, you could, the same way you could go to fan do belts and buy yourself a world heavyweight championship. If you got the belt, possession's nine tenths of the law. I hear matter. those fan do belts are pretty good. Is that true? Oh, man, they are the best. And, you know, I'm so happy that they, you know, partner with us and they make all of our replica belts and they are just cranking out some good stuff and, you know, and coming out and being able to make all the, not just the 10 pounds of gold, but all of our championships. I mean, they're a real great place to have, especially for anybody that's a big collector. You know, that's a big thing. That's a big core audience of ours, all those big collectors out there. And I love it. I love seeing the fans that are coming out and they've got Sweet Charlotte on their shoulder and they're having all the legends sign it and the champions and the previous champions come out. I, I just love seeing that in our shows, to be honest with you. Well, let me actually combine the two things together here and get right back, right back on track with getting into hard times and everything. But you are a full-time member of the National Wrestling Alliance. That shoot journalism job, you left that in the dust last year. Am I correct? Are you doing anything right now? Or is it just about pro wrestling? It, it's all pro wrestling now, baby. And I think that that, you know, if anybody wants to see an example of how well the NWA is actually succeeding, you can just look directly at me to where I was able to step away from a lucrative career in broadcast journalism, working for the NBC and Fox affiliate here in San Antonio. And now to be able to, you know, pay the mortgage, pay the bills, uh, pay for my upcoming wedding that's going to be happening next year. No, oh, be able man. to do that on uh, 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 the NWA salary. It kind of shows where we are at, you know, if you just want to look at it from a financial standpoint, that it's great and that we're growing and we're able to do these big things. We're able to go to new towns like New Orleans and potentially, you know, we're going to have some really big announcements at the pay-per-view. I wish I could give you more, but that's as much as I could tell you at this time. But we're going to have some major announcements when it comes to what we're going to be doing in 2023. And I can at least tell you that it's going to be more shows, more places to go. And we just want to make sure that people, no matter what they're here in the United States or even internationally, we want to give them an opportunity to not have to travel so far, but still see an NWA wrestling programming, you know, in their town or near where they live. Now, I also heard... Joe Galley, that at one point you also trained to be a pro wrestler. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> There's a long list of people who have gone to wrestling school. And, well, and I mean, that. I know it's not hard to yeah. get into the school, but like, how no. uh, how how far along did you get in your training? Joe. Well, you know, I, you know, uh, my my former broadcast partner uh, Jim Cornette would have said I was working outlaw mug shows. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, uh, but, we all? but you know, yeah, I was. I I started. Uh, geez, it must have been twelve, thirteen years ago at this point. Uh, and I wasn't athletic. I wasn't an athletic person at all. Uh, but I was always a fan of pro wrestling. And uh, my best friend, uh, Brandon Taylor, who wrestles under the name Robert Baines and is currently working uh, with the New Japan LA Dojo. Um, you know, he saw an ad in a paper. And so that really kind of shows you how old it was. It was actual physical paper. Uh, and it was this new school that opened up and it was in Van Nuys, California. And they had a coupon basically that was like, 
you know, buy one, get one free wrestling training. If you bring a friend, it's free. And then he was like, you want to come? And I was like, well, it's free. I like wrestling. How it'll be interesting. And then as soon as I got there and I took my first couple of bumps, first couple of chops, you know, I just got addicted to it. And I was like, well, yeah, this is for me now. This is going to be my life. Um, and then, yeah, I started to just work a lot of the indie shows on the SoCal scene. Um, you know, it, it never got a whole lot of notoriety. And then at that point, I was also transitioning into, you know, I graduated from Cal State Northridge and I got the journalism degree and I was lucky enough to, to land a job in Toledo, Ohio. So I, you know, packed up my little Ford Focus and drove, you know, three quarters of the way across the country and started a reporter job there. And then I worked a couple of small ship spot shows in Monroe, Michigan and things like that. These little tiny places and, you know, in front of 50 people and, you know, over in Pennsylvania and a few spots like that. But then I eventually just, you know, I ended up taking the skills that I had as a broadcaster and turned it into the career that I have today, you know, being the commentator, being the voice of the National Wrestling Alliance. And uh, I think I made it a, a great choice. You know, I'm part of wrestling. I get to enjoy wrestling. I get to be a part of the, the storytelling aspect of wrestling. And I don't need to fall on my neck or go through a table or get busted open. You know, uh, it's, so it's it's funny great. you mention that, Joe, because, uh, you know, I was a wrestler for a long time. And uh, I got I got beat up a lot. There's and, proof anybody can do it. And, you know, every now and then, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be a lot of people. It's all about, oh, man, you know, your ego and you want to. You want to be the wrestler and the main event and all that kind of stuff. But I would I would do these shows, and I would look at the guy that was, like, just a manager, and he'd be standing there with, like, a stick, and he'd, he'd hit somebody with it or whatever, and then he'd, like, run away. And then they'd give him the envelope at the end of the night, and I'm like, wait a second here. This bloke is getting paid, and he didn't take one bump. And I always thought, man, you know what? That's the life. And I always, every time I look at a show, I, like, I look at the manager's, and uh, I'm like, is that how much is that guy getting paid? You know, he's getting paid less than John Moxley, obviously. But you know, if he's making decent money and he's just out there never taking a bump, and you know, what a life! So I think you made the right call, is what I'm saying here. I, I agree, and you know, I think a lot of it has to do when you talk about people who have made careers as managers or as part of the broadcast team. It's a lot about character and being able to talk, and you know, people don't realize that that's such an important part of the professional wrestling industry so much so that you have to see it in things like mixed martial arts even at this point where you've got you know the biggest cards are the ones with the guys who could talk the most trash and those are the ones that are going to bring in the most views and the most people are going to fill those seats in the arena you have to be an interesting person you have to have that personality and so if you're able to do that and make that part of the show and become that part of the show and be that interesting thing that you could become a lot. You know, there's a lot of managers out there that almost could steal the spotlight. And at the end of a night, whether it's an independent show or if you're going to go and watch a, a, you know, crown jewel, you know, that could be the thing that people talk about the next day. Did you see this part of it? Not so much the finish of the main event. So that's so much important should put so much importance on, you know, the character and being able to communicate with people and to really make moments and I think that's something that we do really well in the National Wrestling Alliance is we try to make moments for people to remember. And that's what really gets fans excited when we're going to be coming to towns and when we're going to be having big pay-per-views like Hard Times 3 and Revolution Rumble. You know, it's a crowded field out there, Joe. You know this with AEW and now ROH is back and GCW, all of these promotions that are around all vying for attention. What is it about the National Wrestling Alliance? What is it about these shows, especially the ones now coming up, Revolution Rumble and Hard Times 3? What is it about the NWA that you think people really should be latching on to if they're not checking out the product or they haven't checked it out in a little while? You know, the NWA is such a special place because obviously there is a lot of nostalgia that comes with that brand. I mean, the, we just celebrated our 74th anniversary. We got a lot of plans in place for next year for 75. And to be a part of wrestling and really for a number of those decades be the cornerstone of the sport of professional wrestling here domestically in the United States, I think that that really shows the importance of it. And so you, we get a lot of those types of fans out there, those type of old school fans. But the type of wrestling that we have it's very tailored to what I think people really want to see in the sport of professional wrestling. That is top level athletes going out and giving it their all in our heavyweight division. We have big heavyweight guys. Look at our main event for hard times three. You've got Tyrus, you've got Trevor Murdoch, you've got Matt Cardona. I mean, Matt Cardona being the smallest person in the match 
I think that that says something Like we really have an idea that we want to ha- make sure that a lot of our wrestlers have that size and have that presence. And you also see it in our women's division. I mean, if you take a look at the recent battles that Camille's had to have over the NWA World Women's Championship, the vast majority of the women that uh, she's facing are women like Kylan King, uh, you know, people, wrestlers like Max the Impaler. Uh, and Taya Valkyrie. And if you look at those three athletes, those are sizable, heavy hitting, strong wrestlers. And that's what we would like to show in our brand of professional wrestling. At the same time, we do have a great junior heavyweight division, which Homicide has that championship currently. Kerry Morton's going to be challenging for that championship at hard times three. So you've got a, a kid here who's got enormous shoes to fill. Ricky Morton being his father, being one of the Honestly, one of the greatest professional wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots. But he has an opportunity to make history and win the championship that his father once held. And I think that that's what's so cool about what we have. We talk about legacy and tradition and respect. And I think we we really honor that with our brand. We have all of this tradition and legacy that we have behind us and the decades that a lot of these championships that have been around. I mean, you look at uh, things like our World Heavyweight Championship or our World Women's Championship. I mean, you're going back to the 40s and 50s. And to be able to continue on and to bring that forward and to have people battle for those same championships that Mildred Burke or Luthez or Harley Race – All of these huge icons still fought over. I think it's great that we're able to hold on to that history and then show it to the folks here in, you know, 2022 that are still wrestling fans. And, you know, there's plenty of people out there that, you know, maybe the NWA isn't their cup of tea and they'd rather watch some of the other products that are out there. And I'm all for it because when you look at the sport of professional wrestling, a rising tide lifts all ships. And I don't really consider, a, you know, oh, this company is this show and this company is this show. This is competition. I don't see it as competition. I see it as just different flavors of soda that are there. And whatever you're feeling like picking at the time, you'll go and pick that off the shelf. And I think that that's where we are with the NWA. Well, hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment to get some plugs in Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, and Joe Galley. It was one of those guys where you have to say his full name. Joe Galley is here of the NWA. And a big show coming up here, the uh, Hard Times 3, which is uh, November 12 in Chalmette, Louisiana. And Joe, let's get some plugs in for this show, your own social media, etc. This is social be media a whiz. barn burner of a pay-per-view. You have to tune in for it. I mean, it is really going to set the tone for what you're going to see in the NWA in 2023. We have two massive triple threat matches. For First, for our NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, Tyrus, Trevor Murdoch, Matt Cardona, they're all going at it. For our women's championship, Kylan King and Chelsea Green, they're challenging Camille, who's really just been on a tirade as of late. They're battling for the Burke. We've got EC3 taking on uh, Tom Latimer. Nick Aldis is taking on Odinson. And we have our NWA World Tag Team Championships as well. La Rebellion going toe-to-toe with Hawks. Airy. It is a rematch from NWA 74. And it's over for those important, important tag team championship belts. Recently announced, we have our queen, our voodoo queen casket match. Natalia Markova taking on Max the Impaler. We're having a casket match, ladies oh and gentlemen. Oh, my God. How fun is that? It's spooky. All of our championships are on the line. And tickets are still available at NWA TIX. If you can't be there, if you're not in the New Orleans area, you can watch us anywhere on the world on Fight TV. You can order the pay-per-view right now. And the next day, we're having Revolution Rumble, which is a co-promotion with Wildcat Sports. And you'll be able to see that programming on episodes of NWA Power and NWA USA in the coming weeks. NWA Power and NWA USA, both available on Fight TV and both available on the NWA YouTube channel. So you want to check them out. All the information for all of that stuff is at nwatix.com. And another quick plug here just for our most recent project, 33 with William Patrick Corrigan. It's a Smashing Pumpkins podcast. Smashing Pumpkins podcast. Don't miss it, everybody. But we're totally out of time, Joe. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.